Well, we got our first strawberries probably, I don't know, what, three or four days ago. So now it's finally got to, you know, where all these June strawberries are coming on. So now it's about time we have to come out here about every two days and check for strawberries and collect them. So they come on really strong. It's gone about, I think it's been about three or four days since we picked the first ones. So we might end up finding some are overripe in here. But here, take a look at these uh, strawberry beds. So if you look at these strawberry beds, they are very hard to film with this camera. My wife is picking on this side, but there is, there is just a ton. There's a ton of strawberries here in this strawberry bed. And um, so my dog, I think, well, something has laid down in this strawberry bed. So the very center of it's a little smashed down. So we're pretty confident that our dog laid in there the other night during one of the storms. But we hadn't been able to get out here because it's been raining really bad for the last few days. And some of these are actually overripe. But we've got so many, so many strawberries all through this strawberry bed. Um, so we'll get these all picked, or my wife will, while I'm filming, and uh, see how many strawberries we have between these two beds. But, uh, yeah, before you could see all the blooms. Right now you're not seeing too many blooms and now all the strawberries are finally, you know, all the strawberries are finally coming on. So they're just, everywhere you pull back a plant, um, there's strawberries. And this will be this way for, we'll probably have a good three weeks of picking strawberries. So what we're going to do is you can't eat all these. So we kind of clean them up and we'll freeze them and uh, we'll end up throwing them in the freezer and and uh, we'll end up probably, I won't be surprised we end up with 10 to 20 pounds by the time the next three weeks are over. We'll just have to wait and see. So like I said, some of these strawberries actually are getting soft. They're actually getting overdone. So we won't be able to keep those. We'll just have to get rid of them. And that's what Comet's for. So the other day we were up front working by the pole barn and and uh, we ended up running into snakes it seemed like all day long we had a snake in the pole barn we had a snake over by the rabbits so now my wife's afraid that she's to be digging through these strawberries and she's going to run into a snake i don't think that'll happen but if she ends up screaming in the middle of this video we'll we'll know what it is <laughs> so these strawberries are june bearing strawberries so we'll get a ton of strawberries off of these really quick um and we'll get that for several weeks and then they'll just be done for the year so at the beginning of the year you know we pay more attention to these we'll we'll make sure they're weeded and make sure everything's good and then after we get our strawberries we kind of just kind of neglect them the rest of the year we'll weed them about once a month or so and make sure uh, they aren't getting overgrown with weeds but as long as they stay healthy and watered really these strawberries will fill themselves out enough that they kind of help with the weed control anyway so if you ever raise strawberries in these raised beds, if you want strawberries, you need you need to ra you need to keep them moist. Don't let the the bed dry out on you. Drip irrigation is probably kind of your your friend in this situation. Um, you know, every couple days, just go ahead and turn on drip irrigation and keep the bed moist for strawberries, um, and uh, they'll be way better. If you don't, if you have a dry strawberry bed, you will not get you won't get strawberries off of it, or you will get very little strawberries. So it's definitely if you want, you know, if you have strawberries in a raised bed, definitely make sure that the, the bed is staying uh, moist. Don't let it dry out on you. So the, um, so the rest of the orchard is looking pretty good. So we've gone all the way through bloom. We do have where some of our apple trees have bloomed. We do have some apples actually forming this year. Um, so we're hoping this is going to be a good year. For apples now we typically have we typically have a few a lot of white peaches we've had several white peaches every year and for some reason this year we're not having hardly any white peaches not sure what the deal is so I just spotted a couple on this tree I didn't think I had any on this tree so there's there's a little bitty one right there there's a white peach I've got a couple others over here so I've got a white peach right here 
And then I, this one's actually good, looking good. I got a white peach back there, but there's not very many white peaches on the peach tree. Those have been our performers in the past, and they definitely um, not as done as well this year. Maybe it has to do with how much water we've had. I think April was like a record-breaking month for us for rain, and it's looking like May is going to be pretty close too because we got um, almost four inches last week, and then last night we actually got a really bad rain, like three storms in a row. And in about an eight-hour period, we got four inches again just last night. And actually, the town I grew up in where my parents are, that town kind of flooded. And uh, and a lot of houses, different things got water in them. Uh, and that's not a normal thing in that location. So they got like eight inches of rain over there. Really wet season we've had, so I don't know if it has anything to do with it. But this is our, I don't know if this is a Golden Delicious, I think. It's whatever, there's a yellow delicious and there's a golden delicious. And one is a, one is a self-pollinating. And I had a hard time finding that one. And I, and that's what this is. This is the self-pollinating variety. It's here in the middle with, all, with the trees around it to help try to pollinate the trees around it. That's kind of the design of this orchard is we have this, a couple self-pollinating apples. And they're right here in the middle of each section of the orchard here to help pollinate the other trees. And we do have some apples forming on this tree. We actually have some, so this, we have a nectarine tree. Nectarine tree, we got like two or three last year that formed. This year, I don't know if we'll be able to tell. This year, I've got a bunch of nectarines, more than I can count. So the nectarines this year, um, I have no idea. So it's way better than last year. Um, probably closer to what we got on the red peach or one of the white peaches last year. I mean, it looks like we're going to have a lot of nectarines. We'll just have to wait and see how the fruit turns out, whether it's quality or not. This is our Bartlett pear tree. This pear tree likes to grow straight up. I actually had to tie these branches downward to get them to to be kind of open, you know, open tree like this and grow outward. But this one limb, this one limb right here, this one limb try to show it it's actually got pears on it so for the first time in this orchard we're actually got pears that have formed on this Bartlett pear just on that one limb of that pear tree I'll show you the other tree it kind of this other pear tree is kind of remind you of how the Bartlett wanted to grow I don't know if you can see it it's kind of wants to just the limbs want to come out and just go straight up and the Bartlett tree was worse than this one it was almost like a column of limbs and I had to tie those limbs down try to spread them out but anyway show you this show you the uh, this is our, one of our gala apple trees that actually had all the blooms on it and we have got apples we've got apples forming we've got them forming all over this tree so it looks like this will be the first year we actually get uh, a decent amount of apple apples um, I won't be able to probably show you this. Let me turn the camera around. So this is our Royal Rainier cherry tree. And we got cherries on it last year, but then the birds ended up getting them all. But we can see, as we kind of poke in here, we actually have a few cherries that have formed this year. And, um, they're starting to ripen up, you know. So I think the birds are going to go after these again. I think we're going to end up probably I've got a bird net that's probably big enough to cover that whole tree and I'll probably net that tree to try to prevent the birds from getting those those cherries. But here we'll have another look at this gala tree. So you can see you know we've got apples that are forming. We've got several apples. I mean they're just all over every limb. So everywhere you look on this one gala tree, there's definitely apples. Even all the way up there, we've got apples. So it's looking good. Uh, finally, going to get some apples this year. So happy with that. So this tree right here, this tree right here is a red roam. And the red roam is also a self-pollinating apple. So it'll pollinate itself. It'll help pollinate other trees. And... I don't know if we'll be able to show it, but this, this tree actually has some a few apples that have formed on it. Um, 
I think there's some others around it if I can find them. But anyway, there's there's some more apples back in there. Um, so we've got apples on a few trees this year. Just have to wait and see how they turn out. Um, but we do have probably at least three or four apple trees that don't have anything. Probably maybe four to five apple trees that don't have anything. But anyway, that's that's kind of the way the orchard is looking so far. And uh, at least it looks like I'm going to get apples this year. All right, let's see how you're doing on the strawberry picking. I may have to put this camera down and help you. Yeah, looking pretty good. So we're just finishing up picking strawberries, and I don't know if I can you know really tell real well in the camera, but we've got quite a few strawberries that we picked out of these two these two strawberry beds. So we'll go ahead and take these inside. Uh, maybe we'll put them in a bowl and weigh them, see how many we got. So this last strawberry bed that we ended up uh, picking from, of course there's two varieties in each bed. So the side that's closest to me here, there was more, um, there's actually more strawberries on this side. And that side over there is just starting to ripen. So this, there's a ton of big green strawberries on that side. But, uh, so give it a few days and we'll get quite a bit more strawberries on this bed. But, um. Uh, the way I kind of felt as I was helping my wife pick through these, as I was throwing out just as many as I was picking that were good. So there was, we had gone way too many days without picking them. And there was just some that were overripe, some that had uh, ants or bugs had gotten, in, gotten into them. So I probably threw away about half that I picked that I put in the bag. So if you've seen, we'll see here in a minute how many strawberries we had. But uh, we could have had a lot more, I guess, if we would have kept on top of it. And then the, the bug situation, in the past, I had used like, you know, basically some kind of a pesticide to keep the, the ants out of there. Because ants are always a trouble. Once you start getting strawberries starting to rot in there, it just attracts the ants. So always pull your strawberries out. Get rid of them. All the bad ones. Get them out of the bed. But, um, so I'm trying to be more organic this year. So I haven't done, treated these at all uh, this year. They haven't been fertilized. They haven't had anything done. Um, to these two strawberry beds here so I'm thinking I don't know if neem oil would uh, keep the ants and bugs away or not if I would try to spray neem oil in here has anybody uh, used anything organic before on strawberries to keep the bugs away if so uh, leave that in the description below I'll be interested to see what I can do to these strawberries um, to uh, be you know an organic treatment to keep the bugs away in these strawberries so any uh, any ideas, suggestions, leave them below. Thanks. So when we were planting our new garden area over here, this raised bed right here is actually, we planted that in strawberries. We planted that in an ever-bearing strawberry since, since it didn't really work out in these raised beds over here with ever-bearing. They've kind of got taken over by the June-bearing. We really still want one raised bed that's just a ever-bearing variety so that you can eat fresh strawberries throughout the year. And because uh, it's nice to be able to just continually have fresh strawberries. So um, the June strawberries are great for a really big harvest. Um, but hopefully next year we'll have that raised bed will fill out and we'll have some ever bearing strawberries next year so we can continually have strawberries. It's a nice treat when you're working in the garden. All right, time to find out how many strawberries we got. Oh, there's more. Yeah, there's another bowl. Oh, there's another bowl full. They ain't all gonna fit in that bowl. Well, I had them in this bowl, so hold on. You're losing strawberries. I know. There's so many. Okay. Got them all in there? Yeah, they're all in there. Eight pounds, eight point seven pounds. No, eight pounds, eight point seven ounces. Yeah. That's eight and a half pounds yeah. of strawberries just today. Well, that's pretty awesome. So that was actually our second time harvesting strawberries. So this is a Thursday night and we actually harvested strawberries on the weekend. So it was probably at least four or five days ago uh, since we actually harvested the strawberries. So our first time wasn't as good, of course. So this is our strawberries from the first time that we harvested strawberries. These are our frozen strawberries. These have been in the freezer. 
and uh, we had a, a pound and four ounces that we froze from that picking. So we got an eight and a half pounds from this picking. So we got pretty close, pretty close to 10 pounds of strawberries already. Um, when you get this many strawberries all at once, there's no way you're going to be able to eat them while they're, you know, while they're fresh. I mean, of course, we'll eat them as we pick and stuff like that. But anyway, you see these strawberries in here. They're all nice and loose in here so that you can pick out as many as you want um, if you want to get them out, thaw them, and use them as some type of a dish. So the way we do that is we just take them, and once she cleans them, and she'll cut the tops off of them, she's going to put them on a tray with wax paper, and we're going to freeze them just like this, kind of individually, so they're all individually frozen. And then once they're all frozen, we'll transfer them over to a Ziploc bag, put them in, put them back in the freezer, and that'll keep them all from being a nice frozen clump. So you can actually get out, you know, individual strawberries when you need them. So that's how we end up preserving our strawberries. Um, but the everbearing strawberries, you know, once those get going, we pretty much just continually uh, eat those fresh throughout the season. There's really never a big harvest to freeze any of those. So the everbearings, of course, that when you get those going, those are pretty nice because you just continually eat fresh strawberries throughout the year. And the, the frozen ones turn out really good, so you can use those in the wintertime. So... Anyway, uh, that was us picking strawberries tonight, a little walk around the orchard. Um, if you like these videos, subscribe. We also have a Facebook page. I'll leave that down in the link in the description below where we put extra content from stuff that happens here around the homestead. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.